Welcome back to KGFW's Talk of the Town, our artist spotlight segment this week uh, featuring Mark Humphrey, who hails locally from uh, Kearney, Nebraska, but could fit in very well anywhere in any corner of the United States, which coincidentally you've been in every corner of the United <laughs> States, Mark. Uh, seems like. Uh, your music career uh, stretches a vast corridor. When did it begin? What year? Uh, 1977, when I was about 17. So your, your first band, 1977, and all this time later, folks can uh, do the math. I'm not going to ask you what your age is. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but it is 2021, and you have a reunion show that is coming up with two of your former bands. That's correct. Uh, Whiplash, which some of you might remember, uh, from the late 80s and early 90s with uh, Rick and Ron Johnson. And uh, that was a trio. And we featured a lot of uh, country, which was new at the time, <clears throat> and uh, a lot of classic rock stuff. And then we hadn't played in about 28 years. And we had one rehearsal a week ago, and I don't think we ever stopped. We went through 14 songs just like it was then. So it was really great. And your other band? Uh, Blue Mesa. We had several renditions of that band from 93. Uh, the OK Sisters and Tab Eastberg were in the original lineup with me. And then that, that evolved. Uh, John Longoria from West Wind was in that band with me and Chappie. And then uh, it evolved into a rock trio with uh, David Christensen and Joel Fote that everybody knows as the Beagle. And so that will be the version that will be on stage tonight along with uh, some friends of ours, Martin Tilly on harmonica and uh, Greg Tisdale is going to join us on saxophone for some songs. And then we have a, a uh, friend of ours that's coming in to do a little bit of mandolin work with us. So it's going to be kind of a free for all also. So when and where is the show tonight? Uh, Whiplash opens the show the first hour at 9 p.m. until 10, and everything's going to be at the other side in downtown Kearney, courtesy of Matt App. We appreciate that very much. And then uh, Blue Mesa will follow? Yep, we'll, we'll take the stage. There will be just a quick changeover, and then we'll play the rest of the night. So talk about some of the more interesting things that you've experienced as a musician throughout your career. Well, the start of it is probably the most interesting story. I missed two years of school when I was a teenager. Uh, I had appendicitis one year, and my appendix burst, and we lived on a ranch out in the middle of nowhere. And I got gangrene from it, and so I was in the hospital for like eight weeks. So I missed a year of school out of that by the time I convalesced and got well. And meanwhile, all I did was play guitar at home because there was nothing else to do out there. <clears throat> and then... Uh, the next year, we were uh, mowing turn rows in the fields, and the chopper hit a rock, and freakishly, it hit me in the face <laughs> and broke my eye socket, so I was out another year. <laughs> so all I did was play guitar. Fast forward to the junior-senior prom. My girlfriend's two years ahead of me as a junior. I'm held back as a freshman. The band shows up. Uh, I was in southern Colorado at the time, little town. The band shows up from Hayes, Kansas, and their guitar player, for whatever reason, didn't make it. So I went home and grabbed my gear and stacked in with them and played my own prom. And then at the end of the night, I put all my stuff in their van and called my mom from Kansas City the next day and told her I wasn't coming home. <laughs> <laughs> Who was more upset, your mom or your girlfriend? Well, it, it, it's a toss-up. <laughs> It's a toss-up. Do you still talk to either one of them? Well, mother passed away, but uh, she we reflected on that choice many times throughout the years, and she was real happy that I decided to go that direction. So, And girlfriend, long gone. Uh, so talk about some of the notable people that you've played with. A lot of studio stuff over the years. I lived in Las Vegas for several years, and I was a house guitar player in a studio there. And so we had a pretty good string of artists. Uh, we worked on TV commercials, uh, movie soundtracks, that kind of thing. Um, and then that landed me some jobs uh, with artists. Uh, Cynthia Deor, she had some hits in the 90s, I think, and some 80s hits. And, oh, let's see, there was an artist named David Ball that had a couple hits out. Uh, Texas Roy Gilliland was one of the more fascinating guys that I was on the road with. We uh, 
our last show was the Frontier Days, and that was the year that Lane Frost was killed. So unfortunately, that kind of casts a shadow on that memory. But, but uh, you know, just that kind of thing. I, I'm a call musician. You know, somebody calls me, uh, sends me the material, and I jump on a plane or a train or automobile and, and go and, and uh, step on stage and try to do the show. So. And that actually happened la as, as late as last weekend. It did. Uh, it did. Uh, Saturday night, I got a call. I was finally going to have a Sunday off. <laughs> Saturday night, I got a call from a guy named Drew Gorblish, and he is in a band called Forgotten Highway, which is re regionally uh, pretty popular up in the Minnesota area. And he had lost his guitar player. And uh, so I agreed to go do the show. It was in Lee, Nebraska, at the county fair there. And uh, so he sent me his list of songs, and I created a Spotify list and started listening. And lucky for me, I knew about half the material. And we were opening up for uh, Blackhawk, so, you know, we wanted to be sharp and be the best we could be, you know, albeit no rehearsals. So I went up there and... Uh, we rehearsed just a little bit backstage before our show time and went on and it worked out great. So you literally learned their songs in the two and a half hours it took you to get from here to Norfolk. Well, I got up at 6.30 on Sunday morning and started in and uh, rehearsing the stuff and then I took off for there to, to be, uh, to make our deck time at 2 p.m. So, And you, you loaded up, uh, you're also a truck driver, you loaded up your semi You've been toting around your gear in your semi for the last week. And what's cool about that is your musical experiences aren't only on stage, but hauling the stage. Right. Yeah, I've done a lot of production work, uh, including transport. And I had an opportunity a few years ago to work with a company that was leased to John McBride Enterprises. That's Martina McBride's husband, and he owns a big production company, big AV, uh, audiovisual, and so I got on the Eric Church tour uh, hauling trussing with them for about three months. And you were telling me what's interesting about hauling the trussing is? You have to be the first guy on site and you're the last guy out, because the trussing goes on stage now. <laughs> and then it's the last thing to go out the door after everything is cleared. So. And of course you get paid extra for that, right? No. <laughs> No, it's all just miles. You just get miles. You just have to do it quicker than everybody else. What is, is, is there a favorite show in your memory that, that when you look back, you're like, gosh, I just, that was an awesome experience, besides playing your own prom? Well, I'd have to say a couple DJ Bridwell shows come to mind. I'm, I'm his uh, regular guitar player. That's artist DJ Bridwell. And, uh, you know, just recently, we were at the uh, Adams County Fair, and uh, I don't think that the fair people anticipated that he has as much of a following as the headliner did that day. And so we got up to play, and, and it was pretty much a full crowd, as far as you could see, of screaming people for DJ. And that created a little havoc because the Beer Garden Show was after that, and we played that, and security got to panic, and wondering if those 5,500 people or whatever weren't going to try to get in the beer garden, and they did. <laughs> they did. That place holds about 800 people, and now it holds about 8,000. So, <laughs> so that was a memorable show because we couldn't get off the stage to take a break. You know, it's one thing to have great music. It's, it's another to build that following, and, and that is... As, as a touring group, that's where it's at, right? Is that's that right. Following? How do you build that following if uh, you're either a new artist or someone as yourself who is a gun for hire and you're joining these groups that are popping up? I think, uh, first of all, you know, being true to your music and being objective, you know, listening to your own music and, you know, checking yourself, being sure that it's good, uh, People see through things, and uh, they know honesty when they see it. And honest music just seems to do itself. Kyle Saylor, Tim Zock, you know, um, so many of the, of the local people, you know, DJ Bridwell. It's all honest music. It's all written from the heart, and you can tell that. And it, it, it's attractive. It brings people in. That's the big thing. So when you are preparing for a show... 
how is it different when you're the lead guitarist or in a sense you're the band manager on the stage and versus when you are the front man for like Whiplash or Blue Mesa? Well I talk a lot less <laughs> when I'm backing up somebody you know I, I know what my role is when I am an artist uh, backer like with DJ I don't say much on the mic at all um, you know we keep the band going behind him we watch what he does because he he doesn't do the same thing twice necessarily. He plays off the cuff according to his crowd. And so when he takes a left, you got to be there. And so we pride ourselves in that. And me as a side man, I've always prided myself in being able to listen to what my front person is doing, supporting them, staying off of their vocal by not playing fills and things like that. In other words, if they're not thinking about me, I'm doing the right thing. Now, you're not just a side man or a front man. You are a songwriter. I am. And you've wrote several over the years. What's your discography up to? Oh, boy. You know, between I've played on most other people's things more than my own. But I'm trying to get up and get my own stuff recorded finally. <laughs> but I've sold some songs over the years and I've passed some songs along to people that have recorded them. And, and so that's been a great joy to me. So the song that you're playing for us today was actually recorded by someone else? That's right. Dean Kelly, originally from Superior, Nebraska, and lived here in Kearney for a number of years. And, and so you wrote this when? Oh, this one is probably a 15-year-old song. And it's called Hope She Likes the Way I'm Gone. Give us the insight. How did that song come about? Started out, started out as a as a joke. Well, first it started serious about a a, a relationship that I had had uh, years and years ago, and uh, this woman just didn't like anything about me at all. <laughs> yeah, you know, she didn't like my clothes, she didn't like my friends, she didn't like my music. You know, so <clears throat> one day I'm just sitting there thinking, you know, I just don't get this whole thing at all. You know. So maybe if I just pack my stuff up and get out of here and leave her house nice and clean, maybe she'll like that. I can finally do something to please her. So this song is kind of kind of based around that. All right, take it away. Hope, hope she likes the way I'm gone. Hope she likes the note I left. It's so short and sweet. I've taken my things out of her house. And left everything so neat I hope she likes the way There's nothing more to say And I hope she likes the way That I'm gone She never wanted me to do the things That I wanted to She uprooted all my dreams So they couldn't bloom but this one thing I'll do right As I'm leaving here tonight I hope she likes the way That I'm gone I wore the clothes she bought for me And I sure was a sight I wanted to do everything her way But I just couldn't get it right Look what all of my trying does she wanted to change everything I was We both lost, nobody won Hope she likes the way that I'm gone And then there's a big gratuitous lead guitar solo right here And then a big gratuitous piano solo Played by John Coleman from Kearney, Nebraska Playing with Trace Atkins right now And then the end <laughs> That's pretty that's pretty cool. That's pretty. Did you ever send her the song afterward? Did Never. she hear it? Did you ever get a nasty phone call? No, not that I know of. You know, usually I, I left those relationships gone, gone. You know, and uh, when I, I moved out here in '88, and uh, the musician strikes were hitting us really bad in Vegas at the time, and so I just came out here and hung out with friends and played music around here. And uh, which was how bands like Maximum Capacity and Blue Mesa and uh, Whiplash were born. And I was out here on a five-year plan, and then I was going to go back out and, and uh, just live in San Diego. But I met Mrs. Humphrey in Kearney, Nebraska, and she's not moving to San Diego. 
So 28 years later and 26 years married to my love, uh, I'm a Nebraskan for life. Now. So you found someone that did not like it when you're gone. Right, exactly. You know, she never was mesmerized by the music scene or any of that stuff. You know, she met me when I was on stage and she was working at a club restaurant that I was playing. And, uh, you know, she just wasn't overly impressed about any of that stuff. She didn't drink. She didn't smoke. She didn't do drugs. She didn't hang out. And uh, we were, she's totally not me. <laughs> so, you know, that, that helped me. Uh, you know, I probably wouldn't have gotten anything done in the 90s or up to now if it hadn't been for her. So. so it is what they say, opposites do attract. That's right. You know, she helped me really make a good business out of uh, playing music and, and uh, you know, keep right with the tax man and keep just keep on top of things. And, uh, you know, I've always made just enough money every year, even years when I claim to be retired, <laughs> that I have to file taxes on it. So this was my, like, 42nd year. So you might have been a musician, but if it worked for her, you wouldn't have been a successfully paid musician. You know, I'd ended up on the road with one band after another and just stayed out there, you know, and, and that's... I did that for years also, and it's, you know, it's it's a dismal life, you know, when you're not actually setting up or tearing down or on stage, it's just, I just hate it. <laughs> so it's, this gives me a home to come to. And when you are home, you actually have your own shop set up, and you build, folks who don't play guitar probably have no clue what I'm about to say, but guitarists use these things called pedals, which the signal goes through, and then changes the way it sounds on the way out and you build and modify pedals and you've actually done that for the general gigging musician but also for some notable names right right yeah i was real lucky i got a call from a guy that had saw some of my wares on the internet and uh he identified he when he emailed me he identified himself as willie goat and so i said give me a call and the phone rang, and he says, oh, Mr. Humphrey, this is Mr. Gibbons, ZZ Top. I'm down in, down in the great state of Texas. I wanted to talk to you about some of your wares that you're building there in Nebraska. And so I had this interesting, fanboy, mesmerizing uh, conversation with him. And he talked to me way longer than, than anybody on that level probably would have. And uh, I, I got to tell him that he was my guitar hero. And that I remembered riding to school in the back of a 65 Mustang going way too fast, listening to Fandango and Trace Hombres on an 8-track tape and saying to myself, this is what I want to do. And so he laughed. He said, well, how did that work out for you? And I said, I'm not complaining. <laughs> and I says, I'm on the phone with you right now, so obviously it's pretty good. So, so yeah, I, I ended up building him some pedals, some bad monkey pedals, and sending them out to him. And, and, uh, yeah, that was a great moment. Uh, Jim Messina uh, from Longazon Messina in Buffalo Springfield, another great, great hero of mine. And he called me personally, you know, asked if I needed to go through a publicist or any of that stuff. No, on both ends. So we were able to just talk to each other. And uh, we built uh, pedals for Jim. And uh, here recently I got an email from him said, uh, Longazon Messina Live has been released on Netflix. And I want you to watch it. He said, everything coming out of my side of the stage is all Humphrey Audio pedals. And so that was great. That is pretty yeah, cool. Those are, the big, those are my big guys right there, I think. So the reunion show with Whiplash and Blue Mesa again tonight. Yep. The particulars? Song-wise? Time, where can folks get Oh, yeah, tickets? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Blue Mesa opens the show at 9, or uh, excuse me, Whiplash opens the show from 9 to 10. And you're going to hear a lot of Dwight Yoakam music and Kevin Welch and, and just just um, cool stuff like that. You know, Parrothead music and, and uh, you know, Jimmy Buffett type of stuff and you name it. And then uh, Blue Mesa takes over at 10. And that's a little more of a rock act, you know. You, uh, other, other than our horn players that are coming up to do some blues and blues rock with us, uh, we're going to transition over into some, you know, hard rock and touch on the metal stuff, you know, a little bit of Metallica, a little bit of Lit, Green Day, Bling, Bleak 182, Stones, uh, Black Crows type of thing. Do folks need tickets ahead of time, or can they just get get in at the gate? Yeah, everything's at the door. And that's at uh, the... The other side, downtown right. Kearney. In the I'm meantime, the... where can folks find more of your music? 
Well, um, my website is down. <laughs> my my webmaster is long gone. But I'm going to approach a friend of mine and get that up and running and then, and then get that built back up again. Um, so that's one of my things that I need to get done over the fall as soon as the music slows down for me a little bit. You know, the DJ Bridwell thing is real busy for us too right now. Um, since he signed his record deal, uh, we're not playing as many clubs. We're playing more events and shows. And we have a show in Kearney on Sunday. The Kearney Arts show down in Harmon Park will feature DJ Bridwell this Sunday at 7 o'clock. So be able to catch a lot of his. Uh, it's going to be mostly original songs. And uh, the guy is a tremendously great songwriter. I'm not just saying that because I'm here. Um, I was a fan of his before I had the opportunity to get in the band. He's a very good songwriter, good singer, good front man. He, he's everything that I would ever want to be involved with as a side man, you know, in regards to performance. All so. right, so check out the show tonight. Whiplash in Blue Mesa at the other side, and then Sunday, DJ Bridwell at Harmon Park in Kearney. Mark Humphrey, thank you for stopping Thanks by. Thanks for having me. 10.32, now you are at time. We're going to take your bottom of the hour news break. Open phones to wrap up the program when we come back on KGFW's Talk of the Town. The 10 o'clock hour is brought to you by Kitchen Tune-Up. Kitchen Tune-Up serves the Tri-Cities area and is ready to give your kitchen a new and exciting look. Find Kitchen Tune-Up on Facebook or at kitchentuneup.com.